Well, if you're a really conservative, if you're a conservative person, you love me. If you're a liberal Republican, you don't like me. If you're a Democrat, you can't stand me. And if you're a member of the Islamic associations, you want to kill me. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, I just, I just noticed CARES put out a hit list. I don't know if you saw that or not. Uh, I think uh, Colonel West is number two. I'm number 16, I believe. I'm only 16. Oh, and, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Frank Gaffney is number 22. Glenn Beck's number 23. Jamal Salim, my friend, former Muslim Brotherhood terrorist, is number 29. And everything I know about radical Islam, I learned from Kamal. And I beat him. <laughs> and the amazing thing about that is uh, what they quoted in there, under here, if you look at the CARES hit list, they quoted a statement that I didn't even make. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting, because actually when uh, the president said that uh, Muslims had a rich heritage in the formation of our country, so I went and looked and I found an article a guy wrote from 1776 under now. Did you know that in 1776 we were already at war? The Muslims, you know uh, that? Any Marines here? Okay, the shores, the halls of Montezuma, the shores of Tripoli. What happened is in 1776, as soon as we were no longer under the English uh, naval capacity, basically what happened is they start taking our ships, they start taking our crews, and put, you know, enslaving them, kill them, do whatever they could. We were paying booty to them. Yep. It was so bad, we were paying 20% of our GDP to the Muslims in Tripoli. So finally, Jefferson said, time out, had enough of this garbage, we're not doing that no more. We're going to form a navy, we're going to form a Marine Corps. So we did. And then after a few years, they basically went over there and beat the heck out of uh, Tripoli, and uh, we didn't pay that anymore. So from 1776 until now, nothing has changed on that issue. We are still at war with radical Islam. And I will stand against that as long as I have breath in my body. Matter. Principles matter. What's the rule? Of, what's the role of government? Everybody ought to ask yourself, what's the role of government? I think the role of government should be there just enough so you can do what you want to do, as much as you want to do, and reap the rewards or a lack thereof, a lack thereof, to me, with a basic safety net, not a hammock, the way we have it today. We have what, 47 million people on food stamps right now? Right somewhere there. We have almost 50 percent of the people on some type of an entitlement program, folks, we're, we're printing a trillion dollars a year. Uh, Obama's put us into 18 trillion dollars of debt, according to a senator. He said we have 142 trillion dollars of unfunded mandates. Add those two together, you have 160 trillion dollars. What does that mean to you? It means every person in this room owes the federal government about a half a million dollars. Now add into what the states owe, and their unfunded mandates, and it even goes higher. So what do I want? The three things, let's back up. Why did I run for office? I ran for state representative because I didn't like politicians. Honest, that's why I ran. And I was the only non-political guy that was running against nine others, and I beat handled it. And I ran on three issues. I want to stop motorist laws and taxes that are driving businesses out of the state, and I want to stop illegal immigration. Why am I big on illegal immigration? Because I used to fly with American Airlines, I would fly from Chicago to San Diego on a regular basis prior to 9-11, and my flight would either be overpacked or I would go up with 40 seats empty, but I was always overbooked. Finally, I asked, what is going on here? He said, well, if INS is checking, they don't show up. If INS isn't checking, they all pile on 10 minutes prior to departure. I hauled thousands from San Diego to Chicago, and then they filter out. Folks, 2010, for Michigan alone, it was a billion dollars, it cost us some health care, education, welfare, jails, and human services for illegals, and it's going up every year. What Obama's trying to do now, fast-tracking these people, is for one reason only, more votes for the Democrats. That's all that's going to be. We have to stop it. So when I was at the, uh, the convention here, I got to sit down with Jeff Bush, and that's the first thing I asked him. I said, so, clarify what your opinion is on amnesty and illegal immigration. When he was done, I was still scratching my head. I wasn't sure what that was going to be. Now, just so you know, the RNC in general has no opinion about who's going to be your next president. They want to support them all. They want to hash it out in the debates. By the way, the first debate will be at our RNC committee meeting in September. We'll see who uh, ends up being in those debates. Uh, but I can't explain that, because when it was done, I wasn't sure. 
that makes sense? Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the way they talk. When a politician talks, you don't know what they said when they're done. They don't know what they said. You're not sure. <laughs> but we did at the RNC, uh, we have what they call a conservative steering committee. Uh, we meet before the, the uh, RNC really meets the day before. And uh, we sent an amicus brief to the Supreme Court that we are against the judges uh, trying to push homosexuality on us. Now, our party, the Republican Party, has been for traditional, natural marriage since its inception, and we wanted to keep it that way. Now, whether that does any good, we'll see. We had several speakers come, and I just want to just, I'm going to have to read some of this. Uh, William Coney, you ever heard of him? Watch.org? Look that up, you get a chance. He's a Washington correspondent, spoke on the history of what happens when a president uh, of a country tries to divide Israel for peace. Now, I don't know what your stance is on Israel, but I'm a Christian first, I'm a conservative second, I'm a Republican third, in that order. And I have to call he verified everything that I thought. And but here's what he said. He stated that one of the most frequent visitors to the White House under the Clinton administration was, yes, was Arafat. He stated Obama's behavior towards Israel, abortion, and marriage is undermining his presidency. He stated that George W. Bush's presidency began to falter after he agreed to consider dividing Israel for peace. And that we should pray, but I think we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So he gave a history also of what they call the blood moons. Anybody familiar with blood moons? Every time there's a blood moon, the biggest one's coming up on September 28th, something happens in Israel. When Israel was formed, blood moon. 67 war, blood moon. 73 war, blood moon. And now we're going to have what they call a tetra on, the, on their, I can't remember, my wife, you know, it's all the different uh, uh, special events that the, the Jews have. All falling in one day is when it's all going to hit. Something's going to happen. It's going to be interesting to see. I kind of hope they take out the green. I really do get it. The next person that talked was a guy by the name of David McIntosh. He spoke from the Club for Growth. And he encouraged us to hold our elected officials' feet to the fire. Demand free markets, free trade, reduce spending, reduce entitlements, and the crony capitalism. He hit that really hard. He stated that Israel understands right now the only real friends they have in the United States isn't Obama, it isn't the Democrats. It's the Republicans and the conservatives, especially the Christians, that look to Israel for where we are in history. And he basically said, they understand it. And I talked to some people that, that were not at our convention, that were just at the same hotel we were at. And he was Jewish, and he says, I'm telling you right now, we're not voting Democrat this time. We're going for the Republicans. Because when Obama's done to Israel, government is not a bit So, it was also about uh, another one. That spoke was Christina from the Alliance for Defending Freedom. She stated that religious freedom is under attack. She stated our rights come from God, not men, according to our Constitution, and that if the Supreme Court rules for homosexual marriage, our tax exempt status is at very great risk. She stated that economic and religious liberty go hand in hand, and most important issues aren't often popular, but it's a battle that needs to be fought, and it takes vigilance. Folks, I have been hammered for standing against homosexuals marriage. I have been hammered for standing against a radical Islam falsely. And that's something that the gentleman here that spoke, he talked about the rules for radicals. That is exactly what they do. They character assassinate you so that you see how a guy like me is getting hammered. Boy, you're just going to shrink back and say, man, I'm not going to touch this one with a 10 foot pole because they're going to come after me. That's their goal. So quite frankly, we were at that RNC meeting and uh, we were getting hammered pretty, shall I tell the story? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I walked in the back, just before I got to the RNC meeting, not this last one, the one before, I found out that Scott Walker came out against him. And I walked into the bathroom, and who's in the urinal next to me? <laughs> Scott Walker. <laughs> so I went to Scott and said, Scott, what are you doing? Do you know the issue here? And he went, I said, the issue is I posted Colonel West's article where he talked about the biggest problem in the inner city is breakdown of the family. Yes, within that article was a public defender that said, I have a hard time with people that have got five felonies by the time they're 30. And he said, they walk in with a weed t-shirt on, and they can't speak good English, and they don't get off, and they get mad at me because they can't get up. So what came out on that, Dave Agenis says, all blacks can't speak English. Come on. 
This is the kind of stuff they do. They didn't take and take things out of context. God made, I don't care if you're red, yellow, black, or white. You're all God's children. We're all equal in God's sight. Yeah. Yeah. So, just a little bit of information from uh, the RNC itself, and I'll get into a couple other issues. Uh, fundraising for the Republican Party is going exceptionally well. The first quarter, uh, they raised $25.7 million, much more than the Democrats had. They estimate by the second quarter of this year, we will double what the Democrats have raised. However, if you just heard the news today, you heard that Hillary and Bill, for their speaking engagements, have raised almost $30 million. Yes. I'm wrong. I don't know what they say. That's what Anyway, so we're doing well on our funding. I told you about the, the debt that we have. Uh, and I want to just speak a little bit. Principles matter. Morally, what has Obama done? Obama and Hillary were requiring countries that are getting our foreign aid to push the LGBT agenda. Why? Why? I ask you. Fiscally, I told you what they did there, the 142 trillion, 18 trillion. Constitutional. What is Obama doing? He's going around the Constitution and doing his executive orders when they're not in session. Executive orders were made for emergency situations. Not every time he wants to pull something over on the American public. That's got to end. Military, big thing for me. He spent 26 years in the military as a fighter pilot, an airline pilot. What is he doing? He is reducing our military to less than it was uh, prior to World War II. Folks, here we got a world that's in turmoil. The Middle East is in turmoil. You got Muslim fighting Muslims, Muslim fighting Christians, and by the way, if you look at how many people have been killed by Islam so far in history, since uh, in the last 1,400 years, it's 270 million people. And where have most of them been killed? You'll never guess. Where do you think? Where do you think? 110 million, according to the article from Kamal Salim that he gave, ever. Ever. Now, think of this. Oh, Barack Hussein Obama's father was listed as an Arab African. And his father's father, Arab African. And by the way, they were both uh, Muslim communists, basically, because that's what they believe in. So I don't think it's any doubt who Obama really stands for, if things really get tough. He's going to go that direction. That's why I think he's just dumping on his uh, I can't say that for sure. I can only tell you what I believe based on that. Now, why would his father want to be listed as an Arab African? Because Arabs. Muslims, that's what he was, he was a Muslim. Well, they're not picked up. They're not killed. What are the three things that happen if you're a non-Muslim? If you're a, what do they call it, infidel? Or a kafir, is what you call in the, in the brain. Uh, one of three things happen. You convert, you pay the tax, called the chisa, which is half of what you make, which is a good deal for them, because they get half of what you make, or you die. So it's very advantageous to be an Arab African and Muslim because they don't do that to you. So that's why the northern part of Africa has been converted to Muslim. So we have a huge issue going on there. The Bible says that when evil men rule, the people groan. I tell you what, I have had enough groaning in my lifetime. Here. You're here. I have, you got cards on your table there, and I just want to ask you for your support. Uh, and this job pays nothing. I get nothing for my travel, and I spend about $40,000 over a four-year period. What I use of that money is for my expenses, and I also use it to help people get elected, like, or in endorsements, like Harry Portfolio, like Gary Glenn, uh, Lee Chatfield, and those kind of people that are really a school moral and constitutional So that's what I use some of that money for. So if you can afford to put some in that till, and some of you don't have that on your card, it's at DaveAgerman.com. By the way, today, actually I was going to have a fundraiser with Kamal Salim, my good friend. At one time we had been enemies, and he had been a Muslim, uh, Muslim Brotherhood terrorist, and he'd been in the Air Force. We're close friends now, he's a Christian, good guy, and we we're going to have a fundraiser today, but I had to be here, and I didn't know if I was going to make it back. He's speaking throughout the state. If you want to know and get it right from the horse's mouth, it's coming our way. One, look at Europe. Look at England, that's what we're going to be in 20 years unless we make some changes. And that's why I wanted the bill passed in the House, in the Senate, that the governor, I don't think, would sign it, called American Law for American Courts. Yeah. And another one I wanted 
some people here would probably disagree. I wanted to stop illegal immigration. That's what I ran on. Uh, I want to keep Arizona passed. Arizona passed that, and in a very short time, 40,000 people left Arizona. They left the schools, they left the hospitals, and they left jobs so that you know citizens could have those jobs. So I would say the best thing you can do is get involved. You are involved because you're here. Uh, we've got about 90 to 100 million evangelicals in the United States. What percentage of voted the last major election? 25 percent. 26 percent. There's our target market, folks. How many? And the reason I say that is some in the party want the Big Ten. Well, yeah, I agree to a certain extent. But not to the extent where we give up our principles on our platform. Yeah. Yeah. Never had your platform. You would understand that our platform is excellent, but there are people within the party that never read our platform. So they keep wanting to go left, and they don't want to include the homosexuals and so forth down the line. Now, I, I don't hate homosexuals. I just don't want that to be an accepted practice taught to our kids in school like it is now. I want that to stop. There's never been a country whose morals went down the tubes that has helped that country. Never. We can fire Roman Empire. Look at it. Look what happens to those uh, countries. It's not good. So morals and principles make a difference. So you, it's your job to find those individuals that are running for office that really have the principles that you want and you think are important. And that's difficult because when I was there and listened to people speak, Santoro, Jim Bush, uh, Carly, I can't say her name, or whatever it is. She spoke great. It was probably one of the best speeches I ever heard. But then I talked to people who saw what she did at, U at HP. Blue Pack, said it was terrible. So I think probably uh, Hitler was a good speaker too. It doesn't mean he was a good leader to run, run a country. So don't always just look at what a person says. Look at their background. Because you can tell where a person's going based on where they've been. That's a good indicator of where you're going to do, what you should vote for. Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin, when he was 81 years old, and they were debating among the states, democracy, republic, how many delegates he should get, he sat down there and he said, there was one small progress, that there was no, there was just a small progress despite continually reasoning. And also, he said after that, sir, I've lived a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing the, the proofs of the truth that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, it's probable that an empire can rise without his power, without his uh, aid. So he's saying no country can rise without God's almighty hand. And I think that's why our country grew to where it was. Madison also stated that we must infuse morality in our constitution if we wish to last forever. So our background and our forefathers wrote that document, the Constitution. How many pages was that? One. Six. Six simple pages. How many pages are in Obamacare? Good. Not that The Bible also says when there's many words, there is sin. So. Just beware of anybody that's writing a whole lot of bills and you don't have time to read it, you got to sign up find out what's in it. And uh, to back up a little bit, I just want you to know I did chair transportation uh, in the majority in 2011-2012 when I was on it all six years. I was a state rep. I found that money for your roads every time without raising your taxes. You so it's against Prop 1, obviously. <laughs> so, so how do you get to the youth? That's one thing that a lot of people are talking about right now, because our youth go in at a typical institution, uh, and they have some kind of religious conviction, and about half of them come out and they have no religious conviction. They're institutions of learning, but they also basically, it just turns people away from God. And it, that's sad. So if you can't reach them on that level, that would be number one level, reach them on the level of what it's costing them in the future for their tax burden, what they're going to have to pay and the lack of jobs. I like to say the Republican Party uh, spreads wealth because we want companies to start. By the way, for every company that starts, there's a company that dies. So we're not really growing. So folks, I just want you to know, stand where you are, 
pray for your government and your officials. And uh, I just ask for your, your prayers. And stand for those people. There's an old Air Force saying, you know you're over the target when you're taking flight. Amen. Yeah.